Hey, Eric, I, I know you guys have, have liked Jay for a long time, um, even before you were able to acquire him. Um, has there been anything about his game, though, that after, you know, a guy's been in the league, played for so many teams and, and has experience, has there been anything about his game that you have identified that you can develop even further? Um, and, and has there been anything he's shown you since he's gotten here that maybe was a little different than you expected? He's a, a very competitive physical player uh, that, you know, we felt uh, could be effective on both sides of the ball for us. Um, and we've always respected him uh, competing against him, particularly when he was in the East. Uh, yeah, there's always things uh, that we think that we can help players uh, with. Um, and that's part of our player development program. It's not exclusive just to young guys, but even uh, guys that uh, are mid uh, or in their prime of their career. Um, and we try to help them. Uh, and he's been great about all the all of that. He's he has very good work ethic. Really been working on his conditioning. Uh, all of those things that are important uh, to us. Hey, Eric, just one quick follow. He's he seems to be a guy who's comfortable taking the contested three from time to time. Um, is that something? I know you give the green light to a lot of your players. Is that something you want him to continue to do? Because he's hit it at a pretty high rate since he's come to your, to your yeah, team. And the most important thing is uh, he spaces the floor and he hits uh, important ones. <laughs> you know, historically over the course of his career, uh, he seems to rise uh, to the occasion. Uh, yeah, I want him spacing the floor and, and shooting with great confidence. If anything, I want him to shoot from deeper range to help uh, widen the court for us. He has range to... 25 feet. I, I would love for him to space out there and shoot a couple of those a game. Eric, I guess, first of all, can uh, we just get an update on Jimmy Butler's status with the team and being away from practice today? Yeah, he's uh, has an, an excused absence, just like uh, TD mentioned. And um, he remains in the bubble setting and good to go for tomorrow. Is he available for tomorrow? Uh, I do, do not have an update on that. Okay. And then just to ask uh, about something strategically yesterday, um, Bam and, and, and Duncan and Jimmy all mentioned how with Jay starting, it made the switchability on the pick and roll a lot easier and defensively. Is that one of the advantages of playing that lineup that it provides you that type of quote unquote switchability on the pick and roll? That depends on who runs the pick and roll. Uh, there were some uh, instances where they were able to, to do that. Um, but just overall, uh, we had, uh, wanted to have a better commitment on the defensive side of the floor. And, and we did in the second half. Um, in the first half, there were moments, um, but it still has to get better. Thanks, Mark. Good morning. Good morning. The, I don't know a really fancy way to ask this. How, how good has Kyle Lowry gotten? <laughs> yeah, he's a, a basketball savant. Uh, he's a, a champion. Uh, um, is a big time winner in this league. He knows how to, to win games. And, and you saw that last night, uh, 14 rebounds uh, you know, for a guard. Uh, his size uh, just shows you how competitive he is and how important he knows finishing uh, your defenses. Uh, but you know, he's, he's Got the ultimate respect, uh, you know, from me and our, our franchise, uh, you know, to to keep on uh, competing every single year and then finally get over the mountaintop, you know, last year. I just, uh, I think he's uh, he's a, a big winner, um, you know, in this league. He competes so hard. <laughs> you know, he, he's always, even in these uh, scrimmages before this and and. Last night's game, he's diving around, taking charges, uh, throwing his body uh, into the fray, all of it to, to try to help his team win. Hey, Spo, you, you guys play three games and four nights, you know, a handful of times every season. But considering these are the first three games in, you know, whatever, four months, will you handle these next two games differently than, than maybe, you know, those other stretches you do normally in a, during a year? Yeah, we'll see. We'll see how uh, everybody feels. And I, I can't really – talk about the third game until we get through tomorrow's game. But we were able to utilize our depth yesterday. Uh, today was very light. So hopefully that helps.
for you. Hey, Coach. Uh, with a week like this where you're taking on a lot of teams you could face in the playoffs, is there any, like, part of you that wants to hold stuff back or is it also just, you know, go as competitive as possible and fine-tune for the playoffs? Yeah, I get that idea of it. Uh, but you are who you are. Um, and it's more important, ultimately, that you can do that consistently, whatever your identity is, and and have a, a real comfort level to be able to do that, uh, particularly when there's adversity. And I think you just have to you build that through competition. Uh, and if you're trying to hide things or um, you know not uh, or disguise what your identity is, I think that kind of uh, defeats the purpose of, of of what you're trying to get accomplished. Spo, a couple questions for you. First thing, in looking at the Raptors overall, particularly that fourth quarter uh, last night against the, the Lakers, there's some things that stood out there that you know you have to guard against with them going into tomorrow's matchup? We have a lot of uh, corporate knowledge and how they want to play. Uh, guys that have uh, played in big playoff games, uh, they know how to win games. Uh, they have a, a great defense uh, and their team speed is unique. You have to be ready for that type of speed they have it at uh, virtually every single position. And then the other question is, uh, how are you enjoying the coach's casual look? It, it, it suits you. It, I uh, love it. Yeah. Uh, I do. Uh, it's a lot less to think about. You, know, you just have to grab your black shirt, black pants, and, and you're ready to go. Not that I was that creative with my suits, uh, but it takes a little bit more thought uh, when you have to wear suits. Do you hope it's something that continues, Coach? I do. Yeah, I do. Uh, uh, we'll see what happens. I have no idea where this d discussion uh, will go. Um, but uh, I think all of our, I can speak for our coaching staff, we've enjoyed it. Thank you. Hey, good morning. Hi. Good afternoon, I guess. Yeah. Um, so I hear you say this all the time, and, and you have this heat culture that is very renowned, right? You talk about your team identity, the language that you speak is competition. So can you just plainly define? what that is, what is your exact identity that you're looking for when you see these games? Uh, everybody knows who we are. Um, and, you know, it's as hard as working, best conditioned. You know, that's, uh, that's what we hang our hat on. Uh, and we've done that, you know, for 25 years. At least we know who we are. That doesn't guarantee anything, but uh, we know what uh, we're supposed to look like when we're at our, our best. And just looking at the clock, do you think you're there now, headed in the right direction? I know you weren't happy in the beginning of this bubble situation, but now are you feeling like you're headed there? Actually, we were well, really encouraged by the training camp uh, practices uh, that we've had. Um, we've had some really good moments behind the scenes when, when no one else was, was able to watch, and, and we just – been working on that. Uh, guys love to compete, and so they they love this opportunity uh, to be able to to continue the season and have an opportunity to compete for a title. Yes. Hey, coach! Congratulations on yesterday. Uh, apparently, Bam only needed one warm-up game to, to get himself ready. I, I wanted your thoughts on how well he performed on both ends yesterday and also what you like most and least about the opener against Denver? Uh, well, Bam just brings us that unique uh, dynamic uh, aspect to our team. Uh, not that we're ordinary without him. He just, it's, uh, he's, he's so versatile, so dynamic. We're clearly a much different team. Uh, and it starts with that competitive nature. I mentioned it after the game. Uh, you can't really teach that at that level. Um, uh, he is out there to compete to win. And, and you put that next to Jimmy and, and Jay and, and the rest of our guys, uh, that just brings out a, a, an intense uh, competition. Um, but his, his versatility to be able to run offense through him and, and his unselfishness helps our offense. Uh, and defensively, he takes on all the challenges, one through five. Um, so I didn't know how long it would take for him, uh, you know, to get to get back uh, into rhythm. Um, 
but he's, he's not somebody that's trying to force things. He's just playing his game and playing within the game, playing to win. I think that, that helps facilitate that quicker. Uh, and his fitness level was high, uh, even though he wasn't able to compete five on five. Uh, in terms of what I liked and, and disliked yesterday, I thought the second half, uh, that looked like uh, Miami Heat basketball. You know, Denver played well in the first half, so I don't want to take anything away from them. Yeah. Um, but that that's probably, you know, my biggest uh, takeaway. So, uh, Lowry and Siakam get a lot of attention. What does OG bring to the Toronto Raptors? Well, you know, he uh, – would have helped them last year too in that playoff run. And he's really improved. You know, we respect their player development program uh, because guys uh, tend to get better, you know, the longer they're with uh, the Raptors. Uh, we think in a similar fashion to what we do, uh, but he's he's come a long way. He's a physical, rugged uh, two-way player. He can defend multiple positions, uh, but he's really improved as, uh, as an offensive player. Hi, coach. How do you see the team odds of reaching the finals? And what do you think is the great strength of this team? Uh, we're just preparing for tomorrow. We know what we're here for. Uh, that's, that's how our organization is wired. Uh, but you have to take it one, one moment at a time. Um, and we're trying to build our game up uh, to where we can compete uh, for that highest prize. Uh, what was your second question? Um, what do you think is the greatest strength of this team? Uh, there's, there's a lot. I just love uh, the competitive nature. We have a lot of guys that really like to compete uh, and, and, and embrace uh, all the aspects of which team uh, is better and which team can uh, outperform and outcompete the other team. Hey, Jay, there's been uh, you know, a lot of talk last day about the, the switchability of that starting lineup with you guys. But I'm wondering when it's not just a pick and roll and you guys are switching that, when it's all the action away from the ball, what sort of communication is going on between you and, and Jimmy and Bam to make sure that all the matchups are what you guys want defensively? Obviously, it's, it requires a lot of communication. And we just don't want to – we call it point switch, which is just point your finger and expect your guy to be there. We want to bring bodies together and – uh, have a communication at, at the point of the screen or a point of the of, of the pick and roll or off the ball screen. So it requires a lot of communication, and it requires us to be on the same page. Uh, so it it may look like it's it's easy or whatnot, but it's definitely uh, not an easy task, and it requires a lot of communication from us three. Hey Jay, great game yesterday. Uh, how good did it feel to be in the starting lineup just the second time that group has started a game together uh, with Miami? And I thought your two threes in the third quarter really broke the floodgates open. How did you feel about that as a potential turning point? I don't get too caught up into starting the game. I obviously would like to finish the game more than start the game. So that's my mentality. Um, but whatever it takes for our team to get off to a good start and sustain a, um, a good identity to, to the game and a good brand of basketball, the way we want to play basketball, um, I'm all for it. Uh, it felt good to get out there and, and get a good – a good start for our, for our team. And, and obviously, uh, there in the third quarter when I, hit, when I hit a few shots, I was just letting the game come to me. I didn't want to force anything. I wanted to play within the offense. And I knew uh, playing with Jimmy and Bam and, and Dunk, the, the shots and the opportunity would come. So I just stayed within the game and stayed within myself. And obviously, got a few to go. And it, it definitely opened the game up a little bit. Hey, obviously, there's no, no, nothing's definitive in a bubble. So when you have a day like today and Jimmy is not there, What's it like to go through a practice without, you know, a team leader? And two, with all the uncertainty of never knowing who's going to be there, maybe, and not be there, how different is this from a typical season where you sort of got to ride with whoever you have? Yeah, it definitely. You got to stay locked in. Uh, it's getting curveballs every, every day for us uh, as a unit. Um, and it just, you never know what to expect. So you got to stay locked in within uh, what we want to do and what we're here to, to accomplish as a team. Um, and I think we've done a good job of, of studying the film from last game today as a unit and, and walking on the floor and, and, and put into play. Uh, but Jimmy, we know Jimmy uh, very well as a leader. Uh, he'll pick up, uh, he watches film himself. So uh, the things that we saw today, I'm sure he saw as well. And we want to talk to him as soon as he get out of quarantine or whatever he's in. Uh, but it's just next man up mentality from, from a standpoint of, of staying locked in and engaged because we know uh, he's he's locked in and engaged once he he's able to get back with us. So 
um, it's definitely a curveball for all of us to um, hear hear stuff like like what's going on with him, and you never know what to expect. So you guys just have to stay mentally engaged as much as possible during this time. AJ, a lot has been made uh, about that starting lineup and what it could be defensively, but offensively it was really really good uh, yesterday. What what worked so well on the offensive end with those five guys? Uh, well, we're trying to do everything together. Uh, I think you got a good mixture of, 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 of perimeter shooting and threats at the rim. Um, obviously, Bam and Jimmy does a great job of getting get, getting into the paint and, and putting pressure on the defense within the paint. And um, if me and Doc are able to knock down shots, it'd be a, definitely a good combination uh, of us five on the court. Um, I just feel like if we do everything together, uh, we, we can accomplish what we want to accomplish at the start of the games. And um, just taking one game at a time, one one film session at a time, and try to get better each and every day. And that's what we've been trying to do today is just get better from yesterday, uh, yesterday's game, and try to apply it to tomorrow's nice game. Hey, KO, talk to Bam uh, about your fourth quarter explosion uh, on his, his walk off uh, as to what might have ignited it yesterday. And he said uh, a light might have just gone off. Is that the way that you uh, d would articulate it as well, or was it something more there? Yeah, I mean, uh... I just made some shots, you know, I obviously saw some opportunities, took advantage of them and, uh, made, you know, made the most of them. You know, you could have went the other way. I mean, you could have missed shots. It doesn't, you know, stuff just happens. But, you know, I was feeling good. I know putting a lot of reps, you know, these last few weeks here. So, um, you know, it, it came to fruition. Looked like you were having fun. Any of those particular plays down the stretch uh, give you more delight than the other, or the 31-footer or the elevation to the rim? <laughs> um yeah, no, the one play is, uh, you know, Derek Jones could have, you know, went 360 windmill, but he gave the ball to me to do a nice two-hand dunk. But, you know, that was my favorite part. Hey, Kelly, um, obviously you've shot the ball really, really well since the All-Star break. How much of what's happened with you lately and, and finding your form from there just, just has to do with just being completely healthy now after, after you know, what happened last offseason? Yeah, that's definitely part of it. Um, you know, I told someone the other day, I feel like I'm moving really well. Um, this is the best my body's felt. And, uh, you know, I feel like I'm moving really well on the court. Um, so that always helps, um, you know, whether it's getting separation or getting a lift into your shot or power or whatever it is. But, uh, you know, I feel like I'm in great shape. I'm moving well. And um, you know, I've put in a lot of reps, um, you know, over that quarantine, over this, this last little while, I've really worked at it and worked at it. And, uh, you know, it's, it's coming together. Kelly, yeah, it's kind of a big picture question, but how has your relationship with Spo and the communication with him evolved over the years? Not just this year, but over the last few years. It's been good. I mean, Spo's a great, a great guy. Obviously, great character, and uh, you know, he he does communicate with people well. I know that's part of what makes him, a, you know, a top tier coach. And uh, you know, for me, it's you know, my role is ever changing, and as is a lot of people on our team. So, you know, that communication helps, and it just goes a long way to. You know, to know what you want, they want of you when you're on the court and uh, what you can do to help this team win. And, uh, you know, he puts that on the plate for you and it's your job to, you know, to do it. Has, has there ever been a situation where he's maybe been very upfront with you and told you something that you didn't want to hear, but then weeks later you realize that was probably the right thing for him to, to say? Um, yeah, I mean, I think there's always, you know, stuff you don't want to hear. Um, you know, I mean, I guess the thing you don't want to hear most is that you're, you're not going to play or not in the rotation. Um, but, you know, obviously when you hit adversity, you know, you got to get up again, you know, keep fighting, keep working, put your head down and, and get through it. And, you know, whatever it is, you know, on the basketball court, off the basketball court in life, whatever it is, you know, that's, you know, what has to happen. And, you know, people, when you get knocked down, you know, the only thing to do is get back up and get back on the horse.